Oh my god, dude. How do we get that? That's the point of external item descriptions. You tell me what you... Oh! I'm at one heart because I, I just took... Da you know what, dude? You know what I gotta do? I gotta end the run. Welcome back, everyone, to the BD1P Binding of Isaac modded series. Today is going to be a Mastema run for win number one and episode number 256. For some reason, yesterday's victory just didn't count for me. Like, I have a continue button right here. But it put me all the way back on basement one, so I have no idea why. But regardless of that, it's no big deal. Let's get started here. Your question for today, by the way, is going to be, what is the first YouTube video you remember watching? Seed, by the way, is going to be 1v8e0p1. E so for me, I, I there, there's a lot, right? I'm, I'm not a very old dude, so I can recall uh, a lot of my first early days on the internet. And one of the first things I did on the internet, believe it or not, was watch YouTube videos and uh, play video games. When I was a kid, my parents had this, like, I don't know what it was called. It had to be some kind of Nickelodeon thing. But it was like this little plastic thing you would plug into your computer, and it was almost like Amiibo. There were these statues of, of characters. There was a Dragon Tales one, there was a Dora one, uh, there was a SpongeBob one for sure as well, and you'd put them on this little, like, plastic, um, like, NFC chip reader, and it would put a game onto your computer. For example, the Dora one had, like, a, uh, a maze game. The Dragon Tales was like a, an adventure game, I think. And there were these, these really cool different niche ideas there. But I can't remember what those things were called. If any of you guys know what I'm talking about, I'd love to find that thing again. Uh, I remember it being kind of what defined my early gaming experience for sure. But anyways, aside from that, uh, once I kind of... Well, once we uh, I kind of advanced from having a, a family computer to a laptop... I started watching a lot of YouTube videos, and I mean, I mean a lot of YouTube videos, man. Like, I would get home from school, and I'd watch Smosh, or I'd turn on the Runaway Guys, and I'd watch, like, their Smash Bros. playthrough, or their Mario play, whatever they were playing at the time, I'd just go and watch that. And those were kind of like my, oh, this is the worst room of all time, by the way. Good dodges, though, good dodges. Those were kind of like my first videos I ever ended up watching, uh, that being the Runaway Guys Let's Plays. Now, I don't know if I started watching... Hold on. Uh, now nah, we're not going to make that. Those first, or I started watching Smosh first? Because I know I used to come home from school every Friday night with my friend Linden, and we would go to my room on my Kindle Fire and watch the newest Smosh video. But I feel like I might have started watching the Runaway Guys before Smosh, because my parents had bought me a... Or, sorry, my grandparents, actually, when I turned five years old... Uh, in 2007, they bought me a Nintendo Wii, and with the Wii came Guitar Hero, uh, Wii Sports, and I think the, the newest Mario Bros. entry. And I recall, like, I, obviously, you're a kid, you're not gonna be very, very, very good at, at, at any kind of game. Like, and even the easiest game of all time is going to be, like, a task to get through for you. So I think I looked up, like, how to make my own Mario levels for Mario Bros. Wii, and I came across the, the Runaway Guys Let's Play of the game. It was like, uh, Chugga Conroy, Proton John, Nintendo Capri Sun, and... Ah, uh, who's the other guy in that group? What's that, what's that dude's name? I'll buy it, by the way. Ooh, Mended Knife? Okay. What's that dude's name? Th there was a fourth guy there as well. And I just remember sitting down one day, and I got through. Like, and I, I kid you not, I'm gonna go for big here as well. Um, <laughs> I got through, like, 30 episodes of their playthrough within, like, three days. It was kind of insane. I'm a crackhead for that, I think. Um, but I, I subscribed to their channel back in, like, it had to be 2008 when I turned six or seven, maybe? It had, I might have been a little bit older. I, I can't recall the exact year, but um, why did I go down? What the hell is wrong with me? I, I just recall, like, watching their channel, watching everything they played, and then one day... They started playing this game called Kirby's Return to Dreamland. And I was like, this game looks like, oh, what the fuck is happening? This game looks like Mario, but way cooler. And I asked my parents, mom, can you buy me Kirby? And I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think my parents thought I was gay because Kirby is a little pink ball that floats around and says cute things. I guarantee you my parents thought I was gay. And my mom at first, I remember this vividly, told me no. They, they were like... You already have, like, Lego Star Wars and Mario. You don't need another game. And I was like, Mom, 
I, I need this game. So we turn to a, a new thing called Gamefly. And Gamefly was this program uh, back in the early 2010s where you could essentially just go online and rent a game for what... Uh, it was marketed as being free, but I think you paid for the shipping of that game. Or maybe we actually went to a, a Blockbuster. No, what was that that movie store called? There was this like movie store in my town. It was it wasn't a blockbuster because I recall exactly the theme of the store being mostly red and white. But it was this rent a movie place, and they also had video games for the PlayStation, Xbox, and Wii. And I saw Kirby there one day. We were going to rent a movie to watch as a family together because yes, believe it or not, uh, I grew up in a pre-streaming environment, and we had to go to the store to rent out movies. And I asked my dad, please, can I rent this game? It's like three bucks till I return it. Please, God, let me. And he was like, fine, you can rent the game. So I got the game and I called my friend Colton. And I was like, all right, I guess my mom must have called Colton's mom or something like that. And I said, Colton, I got this new game for the Wii. You got to come over and play it. So we, we sat down for like, I think it was maybe like two or three days straight. And we played through the entirety of Kirby's Return to Dreamland together before we had to give the game back to the... Uh, the, the blockbuster knockoff. God, what was that store called? I'll, I'll look it up after the recording. And I'll put it on screen right now for to, to quell all of your guys' worries. But it was it was a very, very good experience for me. Uh, I don't really care for any of this. We could buy this, actually. And I'm going to use this on the boss fight to avoid taking red heart damage. And then we'll guarantee get a deal and maybe sacrifice our HP to get... To Black Judas, maybe? I was scared of this guy showing up. I'm glad we, we took that out of the way pretty fast. Okay, we're going to actually go Angel Deal right now. Um, we could become Black Judas whenever we feel like it, but it, it's a little bit too early for that, in my opinion. And that item is like actual dog shit. Um, I mean, it's not that bad. Someone's a friendly copy of every enemy in the room, making them fight each other. Like, it's not like it's bad or anything, but we can definitely do better. And I don't want to, like, stumble across a better active item in, like, three seconds and just waste all my HP. So I'm going to skip that. And I think I'm going to go to my dice room. And then if it's bad, we're just going to move on down. It sounds pretty good to me. All right, what do you got for me in here? A three room, huh? What was our trinket back here? It couldn't have been super good. I didn't pick it up or anything. What, what was the trinket in this room? Oh, I can't even grab it. It doesn't even matter. Uh, we're just going to leave the floor. It, it's not a big deal to me. Let's go on. Oh, wait. What about this? Hold on real quick. Let's go on downwards. But yeah, there, there was this um, like theater rental. It, it, how do you explain? It, it definitely was just like a blockbuster clone, but it, it was a completely different brand. I, I don't want to say it was a Netflix store, but it, it, the, the, the color coding of the store reminds me a lot of Netflix and like how they branded themselves. But anyways, uh, before like the age of, of streaming and, and digital downloads and things like that for consoles, uh, I had to go to this, this store to rent out every video game I wanted to play. Because we weren't like super uber rich and we couldn't really, you know, buy me one new game a month. So it, we, we turned to renting a lot. But there was a point when after I beat the game, because uh, the Wii saves the data on the, the console, not the game disc, uh, I did beat the game. We gave the game back to the uh, the store, and I kind of had like a hole in my heart. I was like, man, I want to play that game again. So next I went to the store with my mom. I was like just browsing the video game section. We're at Walmart. I know this, this, this is in my head so vividly right now, dude. We were at a Walmart, and I see in the game case a Kirby game, and it, it's not Return to Dreamland, but because I'm a dumb idiot kid, I don't really recognize that. I just see Kirby. I'm like, oh, that's fucking Kirby. I love that guy. And what it ended up being was Kirby's uh, 20th anniversary, which was a bundle of Kirby's Dreamland 1, 2, and 3, Superstar, Crystal Shards, and a couple extra Return to Dreamland bonus type games. And because on the back of the box, it used the, the renders and the graphics from Return to Dreamland, my brain thought it was the game I had bought from uh, that Blockbuster clone years ago or i guess maybe like months ago at that point so i told my mom mom i haven't gotten a new game for like a year can i please get this game and she was like you know what i'll buy you the game fine that's okay by me so we get home and i put the game on the console and it boots up and i'm like i don't remember the screen being there like why is it say 20th anniversary 
and then it hits me. I'm like, I bought the wrong fucking game. But I'm like, well, there was new stuff on here, so maybe it, it has the game inside of it somewhere. Now, it, granted, it did have uh, Return to Dreamland stuff. It had, like, the the ability rooms, and it had the, uh, the challenges and stuff like that, but it wasn't the actual game. But I did see in the game, like, oh, there's these other older games, like Kirby's Dreamland, and, and some of the, the first ones in the series. I want to play those, and that kind of kickstarted my love um, entirely for the Kirby franchise. And, oh. Yes, we definitely want to have Curved Horn right now. And that is just HP back plus a couple of extra stats here and there, so you know what? Also very good. But I ended up playing through. Uh, I, I tried to play Dreamland 1, like the, the first Kirby game ever made, and I didn't like it. It was too simple for me. The graphics were kind of ugly. And, you know, when you're a kid, you, know, you don't understand the appeal of retro games that much because pretty much anything to you is going to be fun. Whether it be the most dog shit game ever made, you're still going to have a good time as a kid playing it. How did I not go to my item room yet, dude? You're going to have a good time playing it either way. Uh, so I wanted to play the game that always looked the best because to me, graphics equaled quality back then, especially in the age of the Nintendo Wii and, and the GameCube and things like that. Uh, we'll go blind here. Okay, it's, uh, it's helpful. I guess, I don't know. But I ended up on that console, on that game, I should say playing uh, a Kirby game called Kirby 64 and the Crystal Shards. This was, and it still is, one of my favorite Kirby games to date. Um, however, like, I don't, I don't know what it is about N64 games to me, but I've always thought they've kind of, like, in general, looked better than a lot of more modern HD games. I know it sounds weird, but just the, the exaggerated polygonal look of, of these N64 games and things like that that, that graphical style has always appealed to me. Just, I love how clunky it looks and how, like, there's so much character and so little polygons. It really is just super impressive to me. And I fell in love with this game. And I, I remember playing this game and looking for all the power combinations. Already our deal, huh? You know what? I'll, I'll gamble. I'll go in here for sure. But I recall, like, going into this game and just being amazed at how, like, many things there were. And because Return to Dreamland, the one on the Wii originally, didn't really have, like, power mixing and things like that, I thought Kirby 64 was ultimately a little bit superior, which is not the case anymore, but I definitely thought it was back then. Yo, we can use the Driftwood guy, actually. You see right here? To make bridges over gaps if we wait long enough. That might not be a bad strategy. But I really was infatuated with this game, and because of me liking this retro N64 game, I started looking up more games that were in that same vein, like Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, um, Ocarina of Time, and because of that one Runaway Guys video or series on Mario and Kirby, it really shaped like everything that I do in the gaming world today. Because when I found Isaac, I was in that age of like, getting more into PC gaming. Like, I was like, oh, I really want to play Minecraft. I want to play a bunch of, like, PC games and emulations and retro games like Pokemon and stuff like that. And when my friend Merm, you guys know Merm, obviously, on this channel, he showed me what Isaac was. Like, I was addicted from day one. Now, the, th the thing was to me is that the creators that I watched back then, like, Bayesian Canadian, um, Sky Does Minecraft, Game Grumps, uh, Runaway Guys, they never even, like, they never really tried to play Isaac. I mean, I think Game Grumps did at some point play Isaac, and I know that uh, Super Mega as well played a bit of Isaac too, but none of them were really, like, the creators that I wanted to watch play the game. And that's when I ended up obviously finding Northern Lion and, and people in that same vein and, and watching them, and it, it's weird to think and trace back, like, man... The only reason that I am where I am today is because I accidentally found a run- Oh, that's a huge. We can actually sacrifice and go to an angel dealer right now. But once I, once I found, like, the runaway guys, my entire gaming situation changed. I mean, I, I became a fucking gamer, man. Isn't that crazy, though? How watching one video when you're a kid can just turn you into to a different person entirely. I kind of like that. We got a heart back here. Nice. And ah, no teleportation. No angel item either. We're going to do this and get the hell out of the room, please. Thank you. We're going to go back to our shop, go into our member card room, 
sleep in the bed, get HP back, and we're going to sacrifice for the either 20 coins bonus or hopefully <laughs> pleading for this, the um, uh, seven soul hearts. So now we're going to go back to that room. I can't do it in a crawl space. I forgot about that. Now we're going to go back to this room. Spawn you. Hopefully kill you. Oh, we were so close to killing you. We were very, very close. Can I maybe get a little bit of a snag off here with my knife, please? There we go. We get key piece one and... All right, 20 coins. As this character, money is not that good. Um, if we become Dark Judas, it might become more useful. But primarily right now, it's really only used for beggars and things like that. Now, do I want to pay for the extra tier rate? I'm going to say no. What I am going to do, though, is buy the Soul Heart for sure. I'm going to take the soul of uh, Jacob and Esau for our next floor because this is a really, 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 really good rune for sacrificing. So I'm going to take this now for us, I think. We could definitely go back now that we have a ton of HP in our back burner here and go buy the, um, ah, uh, the what's it called? I'm going to do a play here. Don't kill my fly, oh, you asshole. I could go back and buy the, the pacifier for tears up, but I don't know. This character can lose HP really quickly. I kind of just want to keep as much as I possibly can. Oh my god, dude. How do we get that? How do we get that? We have a reverse magician card. I got to use my brain for once. What are, what are your options here? You can take intentional damage to go into your... your Oh, I'm so confused right now. Cracked Crown's really good. It's We're going to lose damage there, but we're going to gain more stats overall because of it. If Jacob or if Esau spawns with Flight, we could potentially grab this. Although I'm not going to hedge my bets on this happening. Soul of Jacob and Esau. Yeah, it didn't happen. Um, I don't know if there really is... Ooh, any way to grab this. We've now successfully broken our tier cap, though. And we did gulp. Oh, we can go back for gold. Oh, my God. That was amazing. That rune was, like, killer for us. I guess we haven't seen our super secret room. We should go back for that first. We have not seen our super secret room yet, which could provide us with the means to get over that gap. Or we can maybe try and find a crawl space in this mess of, of a creation run right now. But again, I'm not going to hedge my bets on anything in specific saving us right now. Come on, baby. There is a very low chance of this working. Nope, not yet. I, I got a farm. It's, too, it's, it's the best item in the entire game. I cannot pass this up. I will find a way. Brother, I think we're out of luck. I think, I think we've finally uh, given up our, our last kind of calling card there. I guess I'll buy time, gal. I'm going to go back and buy the pacifier as well because we had cracked crown for an increased bonus, but oh, I am I am very sad. I am honestly very, very sad. Actually, we should buy the ghost baby as well because we have a lot of money we can really only use for upgrading our familiars, and wouldn't you know it, we can upgrade driftwood. Did not know you could do that. Interesting. Can we maybe get a crawl space? I'm, I'm, I'm just grasping at straws right now, but a crawl space? Yeah, we're not going to get it. This is the saddest moment in Isaac history. We're not going to grab that. And I know the guy who made that room as well. It's my good friend, the Turtle Melon. And I, all I got to say to you, brother, is just completely and utterly fuck you. <laughs> but even outside of just uh, the runaway guys and stuff like that, in terms of influencing me and, and what I, I used to watch as a kid... Uh, Smosh definitely helped shape my, my humor when I was a, a little bit younger. Like, for sure, I, I was really into the, the edgy Smosh humor. Ooh, nice room right there. And I definitely remember going with, to my friend's house and, and saying dumb Smosh jokes and shit like that constantly. Uh, and I, I would argue going back to those videos... Oh, that was close. Uh, they really aren't that bad. They don't age very well either. But... They didn't age poorly, I would say. Now, there was that whole thing with Smosh where once Anthony left, it kind of became, like, not as good from a, a, an old head perspective, but they did see a lot of growth in that, that couple of months when Anthony left and Ian kind of 
mainly took over with their their network and all of that um but i don't know how good smosh is doing nowadays obviously not they're not doing you know as well as they were back in the day but i'm sure they're not doing bad i'm sure we're taking so much dumb damage right now because they they were kind of the internet titan of the old day um and when i, when I think of like older creators on the platform i think of like tobuscus uh chimney swift 11 smosh for sure PewDiePie as well is, is definitely on there. Like, I, I think of, of all of these staples. And, and Smosh definitely comes up. But I feel like out of all of those people I just named off, like, besides Tobuscus being, like, mega canceled and that, I think, like, Chimney Swift quit YouTube a while ago, Smosh is doing the worst. Like, they should have gone with the mentality of quit while you're ahead, I think. Because their content i'm sure is still like fine or at least up to par with what it should be when it comes to making uh videos on a high budget like they do can i get more driftwood i can anything else no we have max ghost baby now and max driftwood huge but like if you look at bigger youtubers who quit or at least it took a long time off of the platform i would argue that uh under that category definitely fell tobuscus i would under that category as well uh pewdiepie too these people who whose names were at one point household, even like TV celebrity names like Tobuscus, um, they knew that when their brand started to fail, the best thing to do is to just quit your, your, what you're doing and let the internet remember your content in a better way. Because no one wants to go back to your channel, you know, being, oh, we got the eternal trend. We could have... If we would have gotten two more Eternal Hearts last floor, we could have gained flight. I'm so mad. Um, but, like, if you go back to someone's channel now that you used to watch a ton, and their channel's, like, not doing very well, it's it's going to be hard to try to find enjoyment back into it. Like, or, like, try to get back into the content. Even if it's the same exact thing, same caliber of quality, because it's not doing as well, you are inclined to watch it less. Whereas if they would have... If someone, like... Smosh would have totally quit their brand when they were like super far ahead and started off on their own solo careers for a while. Uh, I I'm pretty sure that if you would go back to Smosh and just see their older content, you would have more, I guess, fond memories looking back, if that makes sense. And I it kind of reflects back onto like, what do I want to do with this channel when I stop doing YouTube, which hopefully comes later rather than just being sooner. Is that the car the key thing? Yeah, okay, we'll pop this now. It's a lot of keys. It's a lot of fucking keys, brother. Um, hopefully, I, I can do this for a long time, but when the, the time does inevitably come for me to quit doing content or doing YouTube, am I going to keep uploading just for fun or because I enjoy it, or am I just going to stop altogether and then just let my channel kind of remain and sit there as a remnant of, of what I, I used to do? And it's kind of a hard question to answer. I, th I think it really is. Bombs are okay, we have a golden pill. Um, it scares me to use it because I know that we might get health downs and that could really screw us over. But also, if I don't use it, I'm kind of a coward. What's the play with this? I'm going to save it for a while. If we need the HP up or anything like that, I'll use it then. But as it stands, I'm going to hold on to it for now. What, please just pay out, dude. I've given you so much HP this far. Please? Let's go fight our boss first. There could be HP after that, or maybe like in our angel or devil deal room. Just don't die to the boss. That that would be a very bad thing to have happen. Kill that guy first. Very easy. Oh my god, spiders are everywhere. Jesus Christ. Okay. Down for the rocks. And spiders, of course. Alright, easy fight. No angel deal because we're, we're in a really rough arena for that. And Damocles. Okay. Definitely you're going to buy Damocles. You're not going to pop it yet, though. You want to save it for as long as you can. I'm just going to go on down, dude. I'm just going to leave. I'm just going to leave. But in reference to what I want to do with this channel when I stop, when I, when I see myself, myself, myself stopping YouTube, it's not out of like a monetary issue or anything like that because I, I have enough money and i make enough to support myself and that's all that i need to know well i, I, I would probably definitely stop just over a i don't want to say getting bored but more of just like um 
how would you, how would I phrase this properly? More in like a just wanting to move on and do more important or better things with my time uh, and, and wanting to just start new things because everything in, in life, uh, yeah, pop it here. You get, you get your secret room, you get a red room open. It's a pretty good deal. And maybe even if we're lucky, which we are, we are very lucky, we can get a, a red room right here and get maybe Sacred Heart. We got scuffed on that last run, so hopefully we get it this time, please. Still, that, that's a very good item in my eyes. Very, very good. We should have popped Damocles. I'm going to pop it right now. And now we are in the danger zone, boys. Well, not quite, but still. I don't know what you do, and I wish I, I just did. I, I'm not going to take you. I You got to give me a description there, man. That's the point of external item descriptions. You tell me what you... Oh, oh, oh. I'm back in black. I hate the sack. I got too long. It's good to be back. Get the R key, boys. Are those the right lyrics? I'm not even sure. We have the R key, though. Uh, and because we have Judas's shadow, Damocles becomes infinitely better. How did we go from seeing Death Surge and not being able to grab it straight to R key? This is the ultimate roller coaster of a fucking run of emotions right now. My lord, man. We're going to have a good ass run today. You're going to have a fantastic ass run today. And we still haven't seen Diplopia, which means if we do stumble across Diplopia, one of our shops, that could be a double R key run. Although, we would much rather get Diplopia on our next lap and not this lap. Which also means because of our completion marks getting pretty scarce here. We only have what? Beast, Delirium, Hush, and Boss Rush to do? And Mother? With our knife piece. Ooh, this sounds pretty fun. I'll take this. With our knife piece. We could go straight to Beast and then to Mother on this run. We have to go to Mother first, though, I think. We can book it to Hush. We're going to book it straight to Hush. We have good mapping. We have good things like that. We're just going to go straight to Hush. Now, we only have four minutes to go through two floors. But trust me, dude, I believe. We have good luck in this game. We can totally do this. Are we going to be at 10 tier? No, we're at, we're at our cap already. Good. Uh, we can totally do this. With, with the Prism item, with Prayer card and getting a bunch of HP from that, I believe if we go fast enough, we totally can make it. But anyways, going back to our conversation from earlier that I was talking about, um, I think if I ever moved on from YouTube, I wouldn't just stop uploading altogether. Like, because I, I enjoy making videos enough where it's like, the most you'll ever see me do in terms of quote-unquote quitting, at least in this current day and age for me, would just be spending more time on videos and not uploading as much. Good. Thank you, Damocles. Thank you for this. Uh, we'll definitely take negative here and then we'll take um this for the future lap and we'll go on down we got to be going quick though here but i would probably just start taking it longer between videos like maybe like once a, twice a month and like a bigger longer edited form thing because the, the problem right now with my content i think at least in my eyes that's my hangman card by the way um is that because i'm now editing the streak it gives me less time to do stuff like stream or, or do other kind of edited content and my schedule right now goes like this. I wake up, I'll record an Isaac run, I'll take a quick lunch break or a breakfast break, and I'll, I'll do something else, and then I'll come back, I'll record a second run, and then when, once that run is done, I'll take both of those runs and edit them down and have two days of uploads ready to go. And tomorrow, on my next day, when I don't have any Isaac to do, I'll work on a second, or I guess a, a main channel video, like a video essay or editing down like a game, I just played something, something strange like that, and then rinse and repeat for the entire week. So, I'm kind of spending a lot of time, uh, I would say maybe like 9 to 10 hours every day just trying to do different kinds of videos, which again, it's not a bad thing because my, my job is very easy, obviously. I'm playing Isaac right now and just talking for it for my living. Wow, that was a really good hit. We can definitely make Hush, I'm, I'm telling you, man. Uh, Emperor, Two of Swords, the Moon, Two of Clubs, King of Diamonds, and we're going to take the Moon for sure next floor. And Gamble um, on the moon, I think, giving us a, a close to our teleport there. Okay, grab your speed and then move on down. Um, and, and I, I want to really focus on the video essay side of things again. I'm working on right now uh, two very fun 
video essays. One of those being the design philosophy behind LEGO Star Wars, and the other one being uh, on the topic about cheating in a single player game, and if that really matters or not, and kind of the stipulations behind that. I'm gonna try to make the LEGO Star Wars one about maybe like 10 minutes long, but I want the single player cheating video to be like half an hour to 45 minutes long of just like my thoughts. Oh shit, dude. On the topic, please go. We gotta be, we gotta be grooving and moving here for Hush. I need to make this delirium timer right now. I, I would kill for this. Should have kept our strange key from earlier, huh? Go. Less than a minute left, dude. Of course, I choose the wrong way, trying to gamble on the decision being right. I thank you. Lost our holy mantle. I don't really care. It's the wrong way again. Who would have guessed? All right. It's got to be left then. It's bombing time, boys. Now, it will kill the boss in, in really quick time, I think. 28 bombs remain. We're going to be okay on that front. That was an amazing dodge. We're going the wrong way, excuse me? What? How? Oh my god, it's to the right and up. Are you kidding me? Dude, we would have chosen that. We could have made the timer. Oh my god, we have one second left. Nope, that's no hush for us. Why is it like that, man? Ugh. We totally could have made it. We just would have gone seconds faster. We would have been there. Okay, well, what's your plan now? You can't really go anywhere else. Try for delirium through a void portal, I guess. That's my only option right now. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. That's rough, man. That's real rough. And no deal, of course. We're going to the negative path this run. I am distraught now. I am very, very distraught. So Damocles just fell. Here are the upsides and the downsides of that. Number one, we're at 58 goddamn damage with a, a almost 8 tier rate. Very, very good. Downside, we only have three hearts left, uh, which means we can no longer buy anything next floor from our, our devil chests, and we're obviously three hits from death. We're looking for anything like a joker card right now. Deck of spades. We really want to get our second key piece for fighting Mega Satan for a higher chance to see Delirium. Fool. Emperor. Wheel of Fortune. Hierophant is really, really good. And Soul of Isaac is also uh, not bad. So why don't we just go fight our boss? We actually have really, really, really good HP right now. I just am more bummed about not getting that Hush slash Delirium chance. It would have been great to have Mother holding Delirium in that thumbnail, but still. Maybe we can get back there and find it somehow through next floor or next uh, lap. I have no idea. We're going to figure it out, though. Let's go fight Satan. Get your bomb ready. Perfect timing right there. Lovely. Good bomb as well. And you're already gone. I mean, 52 damage on a good Deadeye like, shot is, is insane. We just pretty much, like, three-shot him, it feels like. Ooh. Well, we found our Delirium Portal. Never mind. No no hard feelings there. We're going to fight Void right now. All right. Sick. Really, really good. I somehow found the red room on my first try with the Soul of Cain on the Void floor. Oh, my. And we get Isaac's Tomb as well. This is the greatest day of my life, dude. Harlequinitis? Minus tears, but chance for creep shot? Yo, I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay, that's a... You know what? That's that's a lot of damage there. I respect it, dude. I really do. Killing enemies causes Isaac to gain XP. Gaining enough XP causes Isaac to level up, increasing his stats slightly. Ooh. Okay. Sure. I don't mind that at all. Damn. And our final fight is going to be Delirium here. All right. Here we go. This should be a, a pretty easy fight. I mean, look at that damage already. Like, he's already at a half of his health. And we've been here for four seconds. He's actually already dead is the thing. Um, he didn't switch forms once. Well, now what we can do once, he's actually, once the animation is finished and he's really actually dead this time is we can just pop our R key. 
bottoms up boys and uh level up again fantastic Archeon down uh, what do we want to go for here I'm gonna try to speed through a lot of the early game and just head on down to our mother fight here pretty soon you don't need, you don't need to see me running through the, the first couple floors every single time again Okay, so I bought an item called Action Gavel a while ago, and I was trying to get Rock Bottom, but I saw TM Trainer and I grabbed it, and I kind of regret it, because I feel like we're just going to lose everything we've worked for so far. May affect all stats. I, I don't know about that one, dude. What if we just, like, void it and then see what happens with that? We'll go to our, our, our mines now, so we can at least access our mausoleum here pretty soon, but... I was gonna avoid the ones I don't want to... Oh no, but that was an active item, wasn't it? I forgot about that. And it is an Ash Pet XL. We are very smart to go down here early. Okay. I have found an, a, a, a glitchy door. How did we make it through that door? What the fuck? Okay. Can we leave the door? We can. That was extremely weird. Alright, the flesh door is open. Mother is down and it's time to, uh... Figure this out, I guess. Jesus Christ, man. What a run this has been. I mean, it's like, it's not like it's super broken. It's just your average R key run. I'll buy whatever the hell the game tells me to buy. Let's go down. Okay. Two more floors. Two more floors. What? Whenever I kill an enemy, I spawn the ending chest. I'm still gonna go fight mother, but we could just literally stop playing if we wanted to right now. Oh my god. Don't go into these by accident. You just want to make your way to mother. I don't want to enter this chest. Don't move. Okay, you're safe. We do only have three hearts left. We're taking damage. I don't, I don't even know what's hitting us. Help, dude. I, if, it, if it's to the left, we're, we're softlocked. That's the case. If we have to go left, we're completely softlocked. Okay. I'm at one heart because I, I just took... You know what, dude? You know what I gotta do? I gotta end the run. <laughs> I'm gonna die if I go any further. We got the mother ending though, which means we technically won the run to mother. Uh, I don't even know how to explain that run by the end of it. It was just TM Trainer being TM Trainer. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed that run of my commentary, a like and a comment goes a long way for a small channel like mine. In the meantime though, guys, I have been BD1P. Peace out and goodbye.